Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery related to black holes, or I guess more technically, a mystery related to black holes. Possibly a new type of a black hole. Let's talk about this and welcome to Odemath. So today we know quite a lot about black holes, even though um, we've only seen just a few. Normally um, our understanding of black holes comes from mathematics and from just the observation around us, and specifically from the objects like the one you see right here. These objects normally are really difficult to see because, I mean, black hole technically is black, with the exception of black holes producing um, Hawking radiation, of course. and. Um, the only way we can technically see a black hole is when it interacts with something. This right here is what's known as an X-ray binary. These objects are black holes that have a partner, and the partner is hiding somewhere in the back there, although it will be very difficult for this partner to hide because it's essentially an extremely large star. This right here is the object known as Cygnus X1, a black hole and a very large star relatively close to one another. And because there is an interaction between them and the black hole is able to consume a lot of material and produce a lot of energy, this is essentially how we're able to see it. And so, just recently, we've discovered another similar black hole in our own galaxy. This X-ray transient known as Swift J1357.2 and so on. And so this particular object is also an X-ray binary and has relatively similar effects overall but it does have something really unusual about it, and today I'm going to talk about it. And by the way, if you'd like to check out the paper, it's also in the description below. But also, just for fun, let's try to make our own uh, X-ray binary, or X-ray uh, transient, with the sun right here, and a 10 masses of the sun black hole in the middle. Now, it's super tiny, as you can see, it's only a few kilometers across, but uh, this black hole is essentially a very massive body that's about to turn our sun into its own meal. And I don't know how long it will take for the sun to fall apart, but it's not going to take a long time. But as soon as we start running the simulation, you'll notice that the sun is going to start losing matter due to the tidal effects from the black hole. And all of this matter will eventually make its way toward the black hole and um, then get consumed, produce the accretion disk, and at the same time um, release a lot of energy that we'll be able to detect from a very far away distance. There uh, you can see the sun losing the actual mass already, and some of this mass will eventually make it to the black hole. And so these X-ray binaries um, are well studied, we've known about them for a very long time, and we understand them quite well, except for the one we just discovered. We'll come back to our system we created here in a few minutes, but let's talk about the discovery. This beautiful picture that was created by John Pace demonstrates sort of what's happening here. So just like with the other X-ray binaries, we have the black hole in the middle, we have a sort of smaller star orbiting around it, potentially even inside the accretion disk of the black hole, and this star is a donor, it's donating its mass to the black hole, which then creates the beautiful um, accretion disk and the energy we're seeing being emitted toward us. But back in 2017, the scientists looking at this uh, binary discovered that it suddenly became extremely bright. It had an eruption. It's very likely this happened because too much material was accumulated in the accretion disk and it literally just exploded. Uh, it initiated a nuclear reaction and created what's known as a nova. While at the same time, when looking at this black hole, they discovered that, for some reason, every 2 to 10 minutes, it also dims periodically, it becomes less bright, and then goes back to its original brightness with no explanation. So in other words, there was something happening in the accretion disk of this black hole that was causing these unusual effects. And so by using this beautiful South African large telescope, also known as SOT, they were able to identify exactly what's happening. They realized that during those dimming effects, something unusual was happening inside the black hole, or very close to the black hole. It was, for some unknown reason, releasing a tremendous amount of gas that was being shot in every direction, including, of course, toward us. So right there, 
During the dimming effect, they were able to see huge clouds, or technically streams of helium gas, being propelled at us at the speed of about 600 kilometers per second. Super fast. So basically, it was sort of blowing out this huge amount of wind that was being emitted in every single direction. And this is something we've never really observed around a black hole before. And the scientists behind this paper believe that the only reason we were even able to see this dust and this wind coming at us is because, uh, well, first of all, the black hole itself is positioned um, in this way to us. We're literally looking at the side of its accretion disk. But there was a part of an accretion disk where things are just not really flat. In other words, it's almost like a warp or a break in the accretion disk that is visible right here in this image that allowed us to see what's happening close to the black hole. And this is something that happens every two to 10 minutes. So as the accretion disk orbits around the black hole, Every 2 to 10 minutes, we get to see the inside. And what we're seeing is this really hot gas, about 30,000 degrees Celsius, being emitted at us at 600 kilometers per second. And so if it wasn't for this unusual warp, we wouldn't really even see it. We wouldn't even know that this existed. But we're not really sure if this is a common occurrence. We don't actually know right now if any other black holes out there have this unusual phenomenon. But as of today, this is the first such black hole discovered. And so the scientists behind this paper proposed an unofficial name. Basically, this is the first accretion disk corona discovered. Or in other words, it's the first ever black hole that seems to have these unusual really fast gas emissions. Now, this is a pretty good representation of what we're looking at, except that this is, of course, a picture of our own sun with the sun itself being blocked out by um, a dark object. And so this is technically a very unusual and very peculiar black hole, and we can't really explain why it has these unusual effects. I'm pretty certain that we're going to have a lot of follow-ups and a lot of additional investigations trying to discover what's causing this, but it might be just a new effect that we've never seen before, or it might be some sort of an unexplained phenomenon that uh, we need to definitely investigate. Now, going back to our own black hole that we've created, let's see what happens to our own sun as it orbits around this black hole that's very similar to what we've observed in the system I just described. So here we have a, a relatively small star, and as you can see, the uh, accretion disk is being formed by the star falling apart. And some of these parts will start slowly approaching the black hole and then falling into it. So this is kind of how these accretion disks are formed, except that in this case, we're looking at it from this direction. And the accretion disk is so bright and the star is so small that we don't even see the star itself. Well, we barely see the star. But unlike in this paper I just described, this black hole doesn't really have any corona. There's nothing coming out of it and there's nothing being emitted out of it either. And so this is why I think this paper definitely discovered something unusual that we need to investigate a little bit more. So let's just run this a little bit longer and see what happens to our sun and of course to the black hole itself. The accretion disk seems to be slowly falling apart, but it's also really interesting how we're able to create this in such a simple tool as Universe Sandbox. Well, anyway, on that note, check out the paper in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.